Okay, chemistry students, we're going to continue talking about compound stoichiometry, more specifically how to solve problems using percent composition or dimensional analysis. Now, you learned how to, to calculate percent composition of a compound, and you've also learned how to do multi-step dimensional analysis. Now, some problems can be solved using either way, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to practice four of them. Okay, this first problem, how many grams of pure magnesium can be recovered from the decomposition of 50 grams of magnesium fluoride? In this first step, method one, we're going to use percent composition. And the first step we need to do when we find out percent composition is write the formula for magnesium fluoride. Magnesium is located in group two, which means it has two valence shell electrons. Now we need to ask ourselves, is it easier to lose two or gain six? Well, it's easier to lose two. That's its oxidation number then. So magnesium has a plus two. Fluorine right here is located in group 17. It has seven valence shell electrons. We need to ask ourselves, is it easier to lose seven or gain one? Well, it's easier to gain one. That's its oxidation number. We're not done yet. We need to do our crisscross. CM and we never write ones. So it's F2. The formula for magnesium fluoride is MgF2. We are looking for pure magnesium. So the percent composition for magnesium is going to be the mass of the magnesium, all of the magnesium in the compound. There's only one, and it's 24.31 divided by the total mass of the entire compound, which is magnesium and fluorine. So there's one magnesium, so it's 24.31 plus, and there are two fluorines, so two times the mass of fluorine, the atomic mass of fluorine, which is rounded to two decimal places, is 19.00. Now remember, then we multiply that by 100, and that equals 24.31 divided by 62.31 times 100. And the percent composition of magnesium is 39.01%. That's not what we're looking for though. We're looking for the grams of magnesium. Now we know that there are 50 grams of magnesium fluoride. If there is 39.01% magnesium in magnesium fluoride, all we have to do now is multiply this percentage times 50. The mass of magnesium will be 39.01 divided by 100 times the mass, which is 50 grams. And that gives us 19.5 grams of magnesium. Now we have three significant digits here, so we have to have three significant digits here. And that is our answer using percent composition. Okay, now let's do the same problem using dimensional analysis. Now with dimensional analysis, remember, we always start out with what we're given. And we're given 50 grams of magnesium fluoride. And then we need to end up with what we're looking for. And we're looking for grams of pure magnesium. So we want to end up with grams of magnesium. And we're starting with grams of magnesium fluoride, specifically 50 grams. So we're starting with 50 grams of magnesium fluoride. Now we know we cannot go from grams of magnesium fluoride to grams of magnesium. We always have to convert to moles first. Remember that, mole is at the heart of chemistry. We always need to go to moles first before we go to anything else. So we're gonna go from grams of magnesium fluoride to moles of magnesium fluoride. After we go to moles of magnesium fluoride, then we need to go to moles of magnesium because remember, magnesium is what we're trying to get to. And lastly, once we're at moles of magnesium, then we can go to grams of magnesium. 
if you notice here, we go from grams of magnesium fluoride to moles of magnesium fluoride. We have to always go to moles of the same compound. Now, once we switch compounds, we can go from moles to moles, and then we are allowed to go from moles to something else, either grams or atoms or whatnot of the same thing. So we're gonna start out with 50 grams of magnesium fluoride. Now let's set up our grid. 50 grams of magnesium fluoride. Now I'm gonna draw my grid. And then we're gonna to convert to moles of magnesium fluoride. So whatever I have on top, I need to put on bottom. And I'm trying to go to moles of magnesium fluoride. So I'm gonna put that on top. Now if I see here, we've got grams per mole. That is molar mass. We've already calculated on the previous so slide the molar mass of magnesium fluoride and it is 62.31 grams per mole. 62.31 grams per one mole. We're now at moles of magnesium fluoride and we need to go to moles of magnesium. So I'm gonna put moles of magnesium up here on the top. And we need to get rid of whatever here is up at the top, at the top right here. So this goes down on the bottom, moles of magnesium fluoride. Now to find out our mole-mole ratio, we need to look at how many moles of magnesium are in one mole of magnesium fluoride. And since there's only one atom, there's only one mole. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Now we've calculated moles of magnesium, we need to go to grams of magnesium. So that is going to go on top, and that's where we're gonna end up with. Now whatever's on top over here has to go on bottom over here because we need to get rid of it, which is the moles of magnesium. And if we look right here, grams per mole, that should tell us that is molar mass. And we're looking for the molar mass of magnesium and we've already found that on the previous slide, which is 24.31 grams. That is a four. 24.31 grams, which is the atomic mass of magnesium, per one mole. Now our grams of magnesium fluoride go away, or they cancel each other, because there's one on top and one on bottom. And we have moles of magnesium fluoride and moles of magnesium fluoride, so they cancel out. Moles of magnesium and moles of magnesium cancel out, and we are left with grams of magnesium right here. So all we have to do now is multiply 50 times one times one times 24.31, divide it by 62.31, and then we'll get our answer. And that happens to be 19.5 grams of magnesium. So if you notice, we got the same answer on both. Now you can do whichever one you are more comfortable with. If you're more comfortable doing percent composition, then do it that way. If you're more comfortable doing dimensional analysis, do it that way. But as you can see, you can solve this problem doing either one. Now let's do another one. How many grams of calcium are present in 156.8 grams of chalk? Chalk is calcium carbonate, and we're gonna try it doing percent composition first. And we are looking for grams of calcium in calcium carbonate. So the first step that we do in percent composition is find out our formula for calcium carbonate. Calcium is located in group two, which means it has two valence shell electrons. It is a metal, so it, this is an ionic compound. It is easier to lose two than gain six, so that's its oxidation number. Carbonate, I know that carbonate ends in eight, so that's a polyatomic ion if it ends in eight. So I'm gonna find that on the polyatomic ions on the back of our star reference sheet on our periodic table. And this is carbonate is CO3 with a minus two charge. So I'm gonna put my CO3 in parentheses. Now, if you notice here, we have a plus two and a minus two. They add up to equal zero. So I can simply erase them. And the parentheses go away and it's Ca, CO3. That is our, our formula for calcium carbonate. Next step is we need to find out the formula mass for calcium carbonate. We have one calcium and we're, tr we're trying to find calcium so we're going to do the percent calcium in this compound is equal to the molar mass or atomic mass of calcium which is 40.08 divided by 
the mass of the entire compound or the molar mass of the entire comp compound. So we have one calcium atom, which is 40.08, plus one carbon atom, which is 12.01, plus three oxygen atoms, which is 16.00. And we need to multiply all of that by 100. So this turns out, if I multiply everything on the bottom, it's 40.08 divided by 100.09. Apply that by 100 to get percent. And that ends up being 40.04% calcium. We're not looking for percent calcium, we're looking for grams of calcium. And we're given grams of calcium carbonate, and we know that there's 40.04% uh, calcium in calcium carbonate. So all we have to do now is multiply this number times this number, or the percentage. So 40.08, we need to convert that to a number though, divided by 100, and then we multiply that by 156. 0.8 grams. And that ends up being 62.79 grams of calcium. And that's what we're looking for, grams of calcium. All right, now let's do it using dimensional analysis. So we're looking for grams of calcium. That's what we need to end up with. And we start out with 156 grams of calcium carbonate. Now we can't go directly from grams of calcium to grams of calcium carbonate to grams of calcium. We always have to do moles. We have to go to moles. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start out with 156.8 grams of calcium carbonate. Now we know we can't go from grams to grams. We have to go to moles first, so that's what we're going to do. We have grams of calcium carbonate, so we're going to go to moles of calcium carbonate. But we don't want to end up with moles of calcium carbonate. We need to end up with grams of calcium, okay? Calcium. So we need to convert to calcium. So we're going to convert to moles of calcium. We don't want to end up with moles of calcium. We want to end up with grams of calcium. But we can go from moles of calcium to grams of calcium. So that's, what, that's our last step. And that's where we want to end up. So we're going to start with grams of calcium carbonate, convert to moles of calcium carbonate, then convert to moles of calcium, and then grams of calcium. Now let's go ahead and do our dimensional analysis grid. 156.8 grams of calcium carbonate. I'm going to draw my dimensional analysis grid. Our first step is to go from grams of calcium carbonate to moles of calcium carbonate. So I'm going to put moles of calcium carbonate on the top. I need to get rid of this grams of calcium carbonate because we want it to cancel out. So I'm gonna, in order to do that, I have to put it on the bottom. So I'm gonna put grams of calcium carbonate on the bottom. And if we notice here, grams per mole, that should tell you, hey, that's molar mass. And we've already calculated molar mass on the previous slide of calcium carbonate, and that is 100.09. 100.09. Remember, it goes on bottom because it needs to be next to the grams, and that's per one mole. Now we've converted to moles of calcium carbonate. Our next step is to go to moles of calcium. So I'm going to put moles of calcium on top because that's where we need to go. Now we have a moles of calcium carbonate on top over here that we need to get rid of, so it has to go on the bottom. Moles of calcium carbonate. Put it on the bottom. Now moles of calcium per moles of calcium carbonate. What we're going to do here is for every one mole of calcium carbonate, we need to find out how many moles we have of calcium, and it is only one. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. For every one mole of calcium carbonate, we have one mole of calcium. Now we've converted to moles of calcium, and our last step is we need to go to grams of calcium. So I'm going to put that on top. We need to get rid of this moles of calcium over here, so I'm going to put this on bottom. And once again, 
we have molar mass, grams per mole of calcium. We need the molar mass of calcium, and we, which is the atomic mass, and we've already found that out on the previous slide, and that is 40.08 grams of calcium per one mole. Now let's do our canceling to make sure we've done everything correctly. We have grams of calcium carbonate on top and a grams of calcium carbonate on bottom, so they cancel out. We have a moles of calcium carbonate on top and a moles of calcium carbonate on bottom, so they cancel out. We have a moles of calcium and a mole of calcium, one on top, one on bottom, so they cancel out. Now we are left with grams of calcium. Is that what we want? Yep, that's what we want, grams of calcium. So now we just need to multiply 156.8 times 1 times 1 times 40.08 divided by 100.09, and that will give us our answer, and that happens to be 62.79 grams of calcium. We have four significant digits up here, we have four significant digits down here. So we're done. Now it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to pause the video and uh, use either percent composition or uh, dimensional analysis, whichever one you are comfortable with. You do not have to do both. And come back and check your answer. I will set it up using both so you can look at whichever one you did. Go ahead and pause now. Okay, check your answers. Go ahead and check your answers. Now I would like for you to pause and try this problem and then come back and change, check your answer. Now remember you can do it either using percent composition or dimensional analysis. I'll work out both. Okay, go ahead and check your answers. Here's the dimensional analysis one. Okay, go ahead and check your answer.